Welcome everybody to another live stream and for your entertainment tonight, we are going to be doing a wheel unboxing. Uh, Hunt Wheels, this is a awesome 650B wheel set uh, for a pretty affordable price. I know that, um, <laughs> I know that, you know, I've reviewed wheels on the channel before, some of them a little spendy. So, you know, you guys kept asking for an, a, more, a more affordable wheel set. And I think we found one. I'm not too familiar with the brand. So I've invited Ken and Sam, North American representatives of Hunt to help kind of tell us about the brand a little bit, uh, their wheel line and this wheel in particular. Then we'll do an unboxing and answer your questions. So let's welcome Ken and Sam. Welcome guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So. I'm super stoked. You guys sent these wheels. I did a video uh, a couple of weeks ago about you know the most important bike upgrades, and wheels was you know at the top. And a lot of people in the comment section recommended that I try to get a hold of your wheels and review them for the channel. So thanks for making that happen. <laughs> yeah, man, that's awesome to hear. Yeah. So for those that aren't familiar with Hunt, uh, can you give us a little bit of a backstory? You guys are based in England, right? Correct, yeah. So our global headquarters, I guess you can say, is based just out of Brighton on the south coast of the UK. Um, however, we actually, as of two days ago, have our North America headquarters based out of North Boulder, uh, where Samuel's based. Um, and yeah, no, it's a, it's a pretty fast, growing company and exciting company to work for. I joined the team about a year ago next week. Um, and since then, I think we've almost doubled our workforce. So we've, we've been doing, I mean, amazing job at that. But uh, to give more backstory on our history, uh, Hunt was founded in late 2015 by Tom and Peter Marchment, the two brothers. Uh, Tom had worked in uh, some of the bigger distributors in the UK and Pete had just left school uh, with a master's in material science. So together, I mean, they had the perfect recipe to sort of start a wheel brand. Um, and it just came really from them seeing that you couldn't necessarily get an affordable wheel set, alloy wheel set with specs that sort of didn't almost hinder you. Um, I know a lot of us have carbon wheels on our bikes, but most of us don't. And most of us have multiple bikes and can't necessarily afford to have carbon wheels on all of them. So they set out to create quality alloy wheels at a price point that everybody can afford and not necessarily downgrading spec, but building wheels for a purpose. Um, and one of the first wheels that we created was this 650B Adventure Sport Disc uh, in partnership with the guys at Mason Cycles who are actually down the street from us in the UK. So it was it was a really fun collaboration and be able to s sort of see the growth in the gravel segment after creating these wheels. Yeah. yeah I know we did an interview a couple of weeks ago with WTB and I'd asked them about, you know, why there was such a slow adoption to 650B and they cited the fact that a lot of people you know, just didn't budget or didn't want to spend money on a different wheel set when they really had 700. So that's why I'm pretty stuck about, you know, the price point for this because it does make the, the 650B curious option a little bit more attainable to, to more people. Yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, as you, as you say, it, it has been slightly slow to adopt, but you're seeing more and more companies either coming out with 650B specific models when using extra small sizes or small size frames. And now with the huge boom of gravel in the US and around the world, it's really making a comeback. So mm -hmm. it's interesting to see. Yeah, so this this one in particular uh, sits within a range. What other 650B wheel options do you guys offer? Yeah, so we have three 650B uh, options available. The Adventure Sport Disc, which you have right now, the Adventure Carbon Disc, uh, which is similar design, uh, 28 hole, but utilizing carbon um, as the main material instead of alloy for the rim. And then the third one is our uh, Dynamo Disc 650B wheel set. So that's the wheel set that uh, one of our former employees and long-term ambassadors, Josh Ibbett, rode for the Tour Divide um, and races like that. Mm -hmm. 
And that that one uses the the Sun Dynamo Hub, right? So it's a really nice Dyno Hub. Yes. Yeah, we're pretty stoked to have a partnership with those guys. Yeah. So I'm curious. Um, you know, these are these all sound like they fall in the adventure gravel category. How is a gravel wheel different from a pure road wheel? Yeah, Samuel, did you want to? Sure. Chime? Yeah. Um, so our our gravel wheels, uh, you, as if you look around our website, you can see that uh, specs sort of change in a number of different ways from rim width. Um, we kind of focus on a more robust, a little bit of a wider um, bed and uh, different hubs as well. So you kind of get a more durable hub. We use what we call the four season hub. Um, and that hub has pretty incredible engagement uh, at five degrees. I think I saw a comment about that earlier. So it's a mm -hmm. um, a four Paul uh, 36 point engagement with offset Pauls um, making for that, that five degree. And, uh, we've just seen incredible durability with, with those hubs in our testing. And obviously since this was one of our early, uh, wheels that we've produced, it's been one of the most robust and, and longest lasting. So, um, right. yeah. Cool. What's the, uh, internal width of the, the rim? The, the inner on this one is 25 and the outer okay. is 29. So what, uh, What's the largest tire you would recommend running and the narrowest? Um, I personally am running 47 WTP Senderos, which are incredible. It changed Great my tire. gravel riding like day and night. It's so awesome. Um, descending is like a whole new world. It's super, super fun. Um, but uh, I think our, we do have specs. Ken, do you have those? Is it? Yeah, we, we generally say for the 650B wheels in the range of 33 to 50 is, is okay. what we suggest okay. for these wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So it should do like, is the, the Schwabi G1 in 2.1 too wide or is that just on the cusp? It would probably be just on the cusp. We have plenty of customers who for use mountain bikes just for touring um, who use these kind of 650Bs, especially our uh, dynamo hub wheel set to go bike packing on 27.5 inch tires. And we re generally recommend that being the latter end of the spectrum. Right. Cool. Well, you guys in the YouTube chat, um, let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions, Laura is going to start taking notes. Say hi really quickly, Laura. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting really fancy here. Before, I, I would try to juggle. And I think about an hour before, I said, Laura, can you help <laughs> on this one? Uh, well, should I open it up? I think so. I think so. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, just a you know quick disclaimer. Not paid to do this live stream. I think I'm the one that suggested it. Uh, you know, I didn't know a whole lot about Hunt, so instead of just making things up about them, I thought I would invite them as I unbox it, so they can help answer questions. Um, unless there's bags of money in here, in which case that's that's cool too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might have been a box for me then, if there's some money right. in there. But... That's another box that's coming next week, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so we got it open, pretty uh, nicely packaged. Nothing's getting loose here. Let's see. Uh, so we've got a little small parts bag, and it looks like it comes with some some valves and six bolts uh, to center bolt adapters, spare spokes, and yes, looks like it. There should be a spoke key in there as okay, well. That's what that is. Yeah, yeah, there's a, a little black spoke key in there. It's nice. Good to have. Um, is there what's the best way to pull these out? All all at the same all time. Together in one that I've found it. Yeah. <laughs> just for a hot second. You guys should have seen uh I assembled a bike live on the YouTube channel and it had a dropper post. It was the first dropper post I'd ever tried to put together. It took me half an hour. <laughs> uh, sweet. So we got wheels and it looks like it's pre-taped, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Um, All of our wheels come pre-taped uh, for tubeless, every single one on the site. Yeah. Cool. 
And there's a lock ring on this side already. A uh, little toilet paper roll to protect the hub. Spacer. And all right, so this is, uh, do you remember what the, the axle diameter, this is like a 12 millimeter, right? 12 and yeah. 12, yeah. How do you guys handle end caps if people have to swap those out? Yeah, so all of our wheels um, have accessibility in mind. Um, and so with those wheels, um, typically you just take two 17 mil cone spanners or um, some of our wheels feature just push fit adapters. So you can easily swap out the rear axle or front two axle adapters for uh, 10 mil by 135 or 15 um, by 142, whatever your specs would be. Cool. So you could theoretically convert these to quick release? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, when you, we make it super consumer friendly. So when you order your wheels, we try to make it as simple as possible. So all the customer needs to know is which wheel set they want and then what drivetrain they're using. So generally two or three options on a free hub for this wheel set. And then we send a follow up email asking more details about um, uh, what spec they need for axles. And then we fit those specifically for, um, for their needs. So, right. That's awesome. Um, I know for, for many people, you know, upgrading to a wheel set is kind of a scary proposition. Uh, it might be a stretch on the budget and they want to make sure that the wheel could potentially work on as many bikes as possible. So it's cool to be able to have those options, uh, even retrofit this to a quick release wheel. Uh, let's look at the front one. So where are people watching from? Well, we have people from all over the country. Yeah, can you throw some up on the screen? We've got a lot of Texas. <laughs> yeah, we have a huge Texas audience, <laughs> Lone Star State. <laughs> Which is pretty great. Cool, and this is a the front wheel. Anything else? It says asymmetric. What's the asymmetric part of these wheels? Yeah, so the the rim design is an actual asymmetric rim design, which will which helps sort of balance the spoke tension. Um, because when you build a wheel specifically for disc brakes or just a rear wheel in general, the spoke tension will be off balance to compensate for where most of the torque is coming from. And so our asymmetric rim design on these wheels sort of, uh, helps level the playing field in terms of tension. Right. Cool. I mean, I, I love the finish. I like that the, the logo is very subdued. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like just screaming at you. Um, external uh, spoke nipples, so you can a little bit easier to adjust for for the end user. Um, I don't know anything else that that people should know about these these wheels in particular. Yeah, I had, I had one comment. Um, it's uh, a lot. We found a lot of people like the fact that since our wheels come tubeless ready, many of them you can use with tubes, obviously, but uh, we offer tubeless fitting um as an option on our site when you go to check out so we only sell tires by the pair and we only sell tires on uh rims so um that's an option for for people when they uh they, a lot of people just want them ready to go pull out pull it out of the box um sure. fit your rotor and your cassette i wish we could uh fit those but shipping we'd have lots of damage so <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's huge. Like, uh, I know like tubeless is a thing, but a lot of people don't have a, an air compressor at home mm -hmm. or, you know, all the, it, it's a messy job if you haven't done it before. So it's nice to have that option and like or, or already mount, mounted. I can appreciate that. I buckled, uh, was it last year and finally got an air compressor after using those <laughs> pump charge up because it was just, it was just a hot mess. So sweet. So are these wheels, do they, do the carbon wheels have a similar profile to this or are they different? Yeah, so the carbon wheels have a pretty much identical asymmetric rim design to them. Uh, I believe they're as well 20, 28 uh, spoke count. So, uh, and they feature the same uh, four season disc hub. So they're pretty much identical. Uh, the only difference is the, the alloy or the material being used with these. Right. Cool. Uh, any questions in the YouTube comments? We have a lot of questions in the YouTube comments. All right. so, um, so let's start with the easy one. Where are the wheels actually manufactured? You guys? 
So they're manufactured in Taiwan, and from Taiwan, they get built, so manufactured, built, and then shipped to our office in the UK where they are QC'd and finally distributed. Uh, but we're looking in the next two to three weeks to bring distribution to the US, um, as Samuel had mentioned earlier, so that it just helps with customs and duties and reducing the amount of lag you might encounter down the road. Yeah. Are these uh, wheels only direct to consumer? Do you guys, or do you, are there any plans to have them in shops? We work with shops. Uh, we uh, any shop can order from us, and we give them a built-in margin. Um, so we're looking at partners uh, as we expand into the U.S. But at this current point in time, most uh, of our sales are through direct to consumer. Okay. Any other questions? Um... So there's a question here. Blue Collar Backcountry asks if you guys have a 36 spoke wheel for touring. Unfortunately, we don't. The largest we go up to at the moment is 32 spoke count front and rear. Um, and I believe on yeah. that. Well, on let's our... talk about weight limits. Like, what's what would be too much weight for these wheels? <laughs> <laughs> um, for those 650Bs, I mean, they're a workhorse of a wheel, but I think our official tolerance. We recommend if you and your total system, including your bike and whatever you're bringing with you, exceeds 240 pounds, we okay. recommend that you check them regularly with either your mechanic or just you yourself check them. But that's about the upper end of the, the tolerance for those wheels. Right. And what's the, I guess, expected use of these wheels? You're not going to be doing any like downhill courses or, or sweet jumps? Is it just <laughs> on the road? <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, Samuel. Oh, no big deal. Um, yeah, they're, I mean, they're built for aggressive gravel riding. So, um, yeah, they, they can handle a lot. And uh, if you're going to, if you know you're going to be abusing them, um, we have something called H Care, which is sort of our, our lifetime warranty program. It's super cheap, it's 40 bucks, and it lasts for the life of the wheels to the original owner and will essentially replace your wheels uh, due to any kind of damage that's incurred. Uh, down the road. So it's a pretty all encompassing um, deal and at an incredible value. We have that for carbon as well, which is a few bucks more. So, all right. That's awesome. Cool. Any other questions you want to read out? Um, you guys want to talk about the, the hub that's on there and kind of hub options? Yeah. So we're, I mean, we're fairly limited on hub options. Um, since we build each of our wheel sets for a purpose, uh, we really only have two hubs, or three if you include mountain bike. But for our road hubs, we use a uh, what we call our sprint hub, which is of our own design, um, which in includes about a 6.5 degree of engagement. And then all of our gravel or 650B wheel sets have that four season hub that you have in front of you, which has, as Samuel said, the five degree of engagement. And then our mountain bike hubs, which I believe sit somewhere in the 2.5 to 3 degree of engagement range. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for the complete wheel noob, what does the degree of engagement mean in terms of ride quality or, or how it feels? Yeah, so the more, um, I guess, people who are kind of new to free hub technology, the, I guess the more points of engagement and the more pause you have, ultimately you're going to get sort of more resistance, right? So there are hubs that definitely have better engagement than we have, um, but there's that fine line and, and gravel obviously blurs a lot of lines in many different ways. Um, but if you're riding a wheel set like this, that's meant to be ridden uh, off-road on your gravel bike, um, a lot of times navigating slower um, technical sections, you're going to want a tighter engagement uh, similar to a lot of mountain bikers th that talk about that a lot. So it's, um, to us, it's an important thing. All right. Cool. What else we got there, Laura? Hmm. Well, you've got a lot of, um, who I'm curious, got, got a lot of people who ride your wheels. Oh, okay. Who's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, already had experience with the wheels? So Jeff Wilson says he was uh, 215 on a 25 pound bike, fully loaded for Lunar Kansas last year, had zero issues. Nice. Pretty awesome to hear. Thanks. Um, cool. Yeah. Where, where, where else are, are people coming from? Just... Oh, you have people from all over the world here. Um, <laughs> cool. People calling in from Australia, from Peru. 
We got a lot of Ohio, pretty much every state in the country. <laughs> How many people are in the chat? 247. 247. That's not bad. Nice. Sweet. <laughs> um, so I guess where, like in the spectrum, like who who is Hunt for? It's the every man's wheel. Yeah. <laughs> Truly. And we and honestly, we if you look at our price points, they start in the threes, I believe, and go up to, uh, I think, our most expensive wheel set, which is um, designed and wind tunnel tested and... Uh, there are white papers about our aerodynamics and all of that that our engineers have put together. Um, they max out at 1600 bucks. So uh, we really want to emphasize that we try to make the best product we can. We don't focus on price points at all. We don't try to say we need a $300 price point. We need a $500 price point, a $600 price point. Um, we make the product for its intended use. And then a, a price comes sort of shortly after. And we're a very lean company. Um, there's there's sort of no extra extra money spent in unneeded places. We think about every dollar that comes in as our customers' money, and uh, like we really take that to heart. And um, I think that our conservative group in the UK and our conservative approach so far in the US and our kind of pre-ordering system really speaks to all of that. Like we really truly try to make the best products that we can and they just happen to fall at much lower price points than a lot of our competitors. And we've actually seen our competitors kind of coming back lately, um, which is really flattering to us because, you know, we've got big boots to fill, especially in the US. And uh, um, we feel like we're doing a great job with that. So and it's yeah. all thanks to our, our followers and our customers. Seems like there's a lot on here. So. Thanks everyone. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you. yeah. yeah, I do love that aspect of being, you know, an affordable wheel set because I think it's, you know, another set of wheels or, or liar wheels and OEM wheels shouldn't just be within the realm of the super enthusiast. You know, I feel like other people should have the opportunity to kind of experiment and see, you know, what you know lighter wheel set does or a 650B wheel set if they if they've only ever ridden 700C. So it's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot, a couple of questions that have popped up about um, weight limit. Locked in asks if the the carbon wheels have a lower weight limit. Um, yeah. Um, so let's see. That's a, that's a really good question. I would say the equivalent. So the 650B carbon um, adventure disc wheel set, I believe, comes in right below. Uh, in terms of the weight tolerance, but it's it's minimal. It's maybe 10 pounds, 15 pounds below what the Adventure Sport disc can handle. Um, really, the, the weight difference, I believe it comes down to maybe a 50 to 70 gram per rim weight difference uh, when you choose alloy versus carbon. And these, these wheels aren't necessarily deep. I believe they're about 19 mil uh, deep. Uh, so there's not a lot of material that is needed to go into them, which helps reduce weight for the alloy wheels themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Good question, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, the carbon version is 1,425 grams. Okay. Versus these cool. ones, um, you had, you, I think you had cited it early on at 1559, I think it was, 1556. Yeah. So what is the, so these are, what are MSRP on these? These are 430, is that right? Yep, 429. That's correct. And what's, uh, how much more for the carbon? The carbon ones are 779. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's still pretty reasonable, I think, for a carbon wheel size. And even with the, if you do the extended warranty or the lifetime warranty, that, that seems like good value. Yeah, yeah, for an extra 60 bucks for carbon or an extra 40 bucks for alloy, <laughs> it's a free set of wheels down the road if something happens to these things. So we feel like we're very honest and trusting. And uh, I think a lot of our customers are the same way and nobody seems to be abusing it, uh, which is great. So yeah, we just what want to take the, care of people. Let's say worst case scenario, someone you know gets extended care and then they something happens to the wheel. Like what's the, the, the warranty process like? 
Yeah, so that's actually um, an evolution at the moment. So the old process was you uh, would basically send it to the UK. Um, we generally try to cover um, as many costs as we can. Even if you need to do repairs locally, um, you can send us receipts if it's covered under a warranty and have it done at your local bike shop. Um, we like to make sure that they're supported in this as well. And then uh, since we're now here set up in uh, Boulder, Colorado for our US office, uh, we're in process of setting up our sort of return um, support system for USA. So we'll be able to process all warranty and um, technical support and send out small parts and all that stuff from here pretty soon, I think within uh, a few weeks. So, right. Nice. And what about, what about folks in Canada? There's a couple of questions about, they've, you know, a couple of comments about having paid, uh, you know, the, the import to get them into Canada. Yeah, we're, we're unable to sort of control a lot of the import duties. So for those of you that don't know, um, I think a lot of people learned from kind of the chain reaction days when a lot of stuff was coming in. Um, I guess it's still happening a fair bit, but uh, anything over $800, you there are incurred costs that the U.S. government sort of pegs. And not everybody gets it, we've found. Um, a lot of, we've, we predict like 40% sort of slips through the cracks. Um, but you're basically looking at about a 10% um, duty to the US over $800. So that's our big goal in getting kind of higher price products over 800 bucks here as quick as we can so that our customers don't have to pay um, those duty fees that the US government's um, tagging on. So, and then Canada, I think Ken has the specs on that and we wanna to try to support um, sending Canada product as well. And I think unfortunately they'll still incur uh, import duties, but uh, yeah, Canada is a little bit tougher of a market uh, because their import duties are a lot lower than the US. So anything over $500 gets incurred with, I believe, a six or 8% import mm -hmm. duty. Um, again, we're trying to work that work into how we can tackle that for the, the consumer, but currently it's just nature of doing business um, in Canada so but we're continuing to look at ways to improve it cool. mm -hmm. yeah I see one uh, here uh, Russ what are you gonna do with those wheels what are you gonna put them on uh, <laughs> that's a good question uh, these will probably end up on the Bambora uh, at some point or you know actually I'm, I'm testing the the Richie Outback the new version, mm -hmm. nice. and they ship those with 700 uh, by 45, but they're supposed to be 650B compatible. Okay. And I'm gonna probably put those on on that first, just to see how it changes uh, the handling characteristics. So Richie Outback, this is what this, these are gonna go on. So be stoked. Nice. How big of a tire will you run? Uh, that's why I was asking about the, the Schwabi G ones because I've okay. got a pair of those just hanging on the wall, waiting waiting to be put on something. Cool. <laughs> so either those or uh, Sanderos. I've got Sanderos yeah. also. I try out. Good choice. <laughs> yeah, they're a fun tire, especially here in Missoula, mm -hmm. especially in the spring when you know it's just been ra raining and things are a little sloppy. It's nice to have yeah. that that extra extra knob. Yeah. So another question that keeps coming up do you have are there plans for a i think that's supposed to say plus size um like a, a slight slightly larger people asking about up to a three tire we do have one plus size wheel set and it's really intended for uh, emtb at the moment um we're always we're always looking into ways to expand and developing and working on new projects so Keep an eye out in the future. You never know what'll what'll come down the road. But I think that EMTB uh, wheel set that we currently have, it's been getting good reviews. Um, we saw a pink bike review that uh, that was really really great. Durability is really good, and um, so that bodes well for maybe future projects. So we'll see. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, the nice thing about our company is that we're still so small. So uh, typically we keep a running list of requests that we get from customers. And anytime there's a big enough uh, voice from a customer or enough voices to warrant us investing that R&D money into creating a fat bike uh, wheel set, then we'll we'll take the chance and do it. Um, so as if there's something that anybody's interested in, we highly recommend get, getting in touch with our support, our customer service team and letting us know what you want to see. Yeah. 
I'm curious um, how how has uh, the infiltration into the U.S. market been? Has it been slow and gradual, or you know, did the word just get out and then boom, everyone's buying the wheels all of a sudden? Yeah, um, it it was a little bit of both actually. When I started about a year ago, um, I was the first sort of boot on the ground here in the U.S. and Luckily, about, I would say, 20% of the wheels that we were shipping were already going to the U.S. Okay. So here and there, people would know who we are, but we were rather, still rather unknown. Um, but recently, we've been seeing a nice uptick. Um, we've been trying to get together some partnerships with uh, some leading brands, um, like Ceramic Speed, who we stock some of their bearings in some of our hubs. and. We've partnered with a couple uh, teams and, I guess, gravel cyclists um, mm. in the U.S. So uh, I think just a combination of that and just really word of mouth, which seems like a lot of your or a lot of your viewers have been getting, uh, has really just helped us get to where we are right now. Yeah, our viewers are they, they've got their finger on the pulse. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to know what's trending, like our, viewer, our, our viewers know, and we try to highlight it on the channel. So it's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> That's great news. Yeah. So Russ, yeah. question unbiased asks, can you test, test the spoke tension out of the box or do a sound check? Sound check. Sure. <laughs> you, you guys are asking like the most amusical person in, in the universe. <laughs> I don't know. This is some. Wheel. I think somebody just wants to see you try. Wheel ASMR here. <laughs> I can here. I'll massage the. Does that sound good? <laughs> I should just start the ASMR channel. Like just bike ASMR. <laughs> uh, speaking of ASMR, if you guys like this content, <laughs> give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel out for real. Because I don't see any bags of money in here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there should have been some swag in there for you, Russ. Right. <laughs> might be in the bottom of that box a little deeper. Oh, yeah, there's a, a pence. <laughs> a pen. Really? There's, there's nothing else in there? Uh, no. I mean, just uh, um, just the invoice. No. Oh. There should I have been the, the invoice sheet and the bags of money aren't in here. So. <laughs> <laughs> we, usually, we, we give away a lot of water bottles and a lot of yeah. uh, cycling caps and a lot of hats and t-shirts. And I love it's tucked inside. A, it doesn't take much to convince us to uh, unload some swag for our customers. So a quick right. like that or things like that. So we like to stoke people out. So Yeah. No, they, they, must have, they must have forgotten. Oh, bummer. It's with the, it's with the bags. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Any other questions? Um, Jennifer Foxley asked if you guys, uh, if you have any plans for a 26 inch wheel? Yeah, is 26 inch going to come back? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> you see it a little bit here and there. Um, but unfortunately, as far as I know, Samuel might be able to shed some more light because he focuses more on mountain bike side of things. But as far as I know, we don't have something in the pipeline for 2020. But I mean, yeah. it could be something if we get enough uh, interest. I know Jennifer's asking because she's a fairly short rider. And for her, it's hard to get like, a, I forget how tall she is. She's, she's pretty short. And you know, toe, toe overlap is a, is a big thing. So I think she has a bike with 650 dB, but for her proportions, 26 would be an interesting option. So that's probably why she's asking. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, we um, we really take to heart that we, we're spending our customers' money in every single thing we do. So, you know, like Ken said, uh, if there's things that people feel really strongly about, we're small enough to like move quickly and uh, and try things. So, yeah. So here's a question, you know, gravel tires, when they first came out, you know, they were 30 millimeters and they've progressively gotten larger. Is there, at what point do you think, or how wide do you think a gravel rim will get? Is 25 the max or is it going to creep into the upper 20s or low 30s? I, I had a good buddy that I had this conversation with uh, last night. He lives up in um, Vail in Colorado. And he does a lot of his bike. He got, I guess, call like a monster cross. So he's got uh, our dynamo set up, and 
he does just super long off-road uh, rides. And we were talking gravel bikes versus mountain bikes and for that purpose. Um, and anyway, yeah, he, he basically said that a 30 inner for his gravel bike is ideal. And like we, we both had mountain bikes that were sort of doing similar purpose 10 years ago. And, uh, you know, like that, that width on a bike like that is, is pretty incredible. So how, you know, how big of a tire does he run on his grapple bike? At that point, it would be like a 2.2 minimal, you know? Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I think like, that's kind of what we talked about. It's like, if you could run two, two up to a two, three, even on a gravel bike, like it's, you know, it's crazy. I know, but like, look at where we are now with so many of these things. Like why do gravel bikes even exist when we're all riding bikes? Yeah, riding, riding on gravel roads with our road bikes 15 years ago and longer. <laughs> I love it. I remember when the when the, the Pan Racer Gravel King first came out and it was like 28 millimeters or 30. Yeah. Like, <laughs> laugh, laughable where where the widths are now. Uh huh. Well, any other questions? Um, How many people in the chat? Have you broken a record? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're sitting at uh, 245 right now. Sweet. So there's a lot. I can tell you guys, this is the first live stream we've ever done where there were 30 people in the waiting room already chatting. So a lot <laughs> nice. of interest, a lot of stoke about these wheels. Um, I think people are <laughs> definitely looking for, you know, like you guys said, every man's option, like a, a good, affordable wheel set. Uh, which is different from the cheapest wheel set you can buy. <laughs> I'm we sure there them. are that are, are cheaper, but I'm trying to find that best, uh, that point where, where quality and price meet the kind of the golden mean. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what I'm looking for for our viewers. <laughs> so how about this one to take it home? Uh, Mitchell Myers asks, larger rider, 245 succession for 650B gravel. So I, I looked up our specs for if you're into 650, uh, our sort of max rider weight that we, you know, if, and again, like we don't say you have to be within that range. Like we just say, check your wheels regularly if you hit um, a specific weight range. But uh, I just checked in our carbon uh, 650B adventure wheel set is actually 265. So okay. Um, that one, I think, uh, you would have some pretty good success by the H care. If you're worried about it, you know, an extra 60 bucks, um, that $700 price point wheel set. Yeah. You'd sure. be happy. Yeah. That, that, that'll assuage the fears of going carbon. <laughs> yeah. Our, our customer service is pretty incredible. So I used to work for Shimano, um, for over 10 years and, um, uh, coming into like a small company like this and having the capacity you know, my, my view sort of looking in, I started uh, a couple months ago with this company and um, the level of like support and customer service is pretty incredible. Like, you know, looking at the way that Shimano did things, like I thought they were really, really good. And, you know, they're, they've got a much larger net obviously, but um, you know, my perspective is it's, it's pretty incredible. The, these guys going out of their way as much as they do and like tossing a free hub in the mail. If, uh, you accidentally said that you, uh, sorry, that you gave, that you ordered the wrong one, right? If it was your fault. And like, I just see us do that all day long. Um, somebody's got issues. Like we just constantly try to take care of it. Our live chat's really good. Email is really great. Phone. There's so many ways to get in touch with us. So, and we're increasing that all the time since we're here in the U S now. So. All right. Cool. Uh, any last good question? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, awesome. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Thanks for joining us in chat, you guys in YouTube chat. Thank you, uh, Ken and Sam, for, for being a part of this live unboxing. Um, lots of interest in these wheels. Even you know before I contacted you, I'd always see you know hunt, hunt wheels pop up in the comments as a recommendation. So excited to, to put these through its paces. Like I said, it's going to go on the Richie Outback first. and. Cool. probably make its way to the the bambora eventually because everything nice. <laughs> ends up on the crust of bambora at some point especially <laughs> <Yes. the> <laughs> yeah uh, so thanks for uh thanks again ken sam mm -hmm. Take thank you day. um if uh be sh if you're not already subscribed i don't know what you're, you're waiting for because this isn't the review video the review is going to come in you know a couple weeks couple months 
So you definitely want, want to be subscribed for that. And if you uh, want to discuss this more, we, have, we started a dis Discord server a couple weeks ago. I think two weeks ago, literally two weeks ago. And there's already around 800 people in the Discord server nerding out about bike parts and wheels and, and geometry. And it's been pretty chill. Like, you know, laying down the law, don't be a dick. That's like the main rule. Nerd out all you want, ask all your new questions. It's a good place to, to discuss products like this. Um, let's see, anything else? Uh, yeah, and once again, thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys make this content possible. Um, yeah, you guys rock. And if you guys like this content, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. And as always, are you ready to hit that end broadcast button, Laura? All right, thumbs up. Uh, keep the supple side down.